Hey everybody, welcome back in the Cheapo Spotlight, the all new non auto ranging Anning DM830L. For your Cheapo pleasure, this is a sparse, and I mean sparse multimeter. Let's take a look. This is one Cheapo. I paid about $9 Canadian, around seven bucks US for this multimeter. And of course, I've got two, but uh, yeah, they are definitely well priced. A30L is pretty slim pickings in terms of what you get. Hey, you don't even get a box. No, I got a piece of bubble wrap. That's it. Oh, I really prefer a box, especially when it's coming over the pond. But yeah, well, so be it. As well, you get your really cheapo test leads. Look at the small, tiny little input on those. Whoa. Yeah, so we'll see just how good these are. And uh, basically a pull-out piece of paper. Pretty generic in nature. Not... Uh, solely for this multimeter um but gives you the basic specs the lowdown not much else you need first impressions on this meter wow it is really feeling cheap this is one light meter even with that nine volt battery yes it takes a nine volt battery but um just super light so you know mm, not gonna be much of a door weight hopefully it's gonna be a better multimeter tilt stand standing bail whatever you like to call it the thing that keeps it upright um, it's pretty wide actually, so that's a good thing. Um, not too uh, shabby. And it doesn't flop around once again, so in terms of support and stability, yeah, it's definitely good. Now, this is a really slippery surface I'm on, but fear not, you can definitely one hand it if you need to. Take a closer look at the rotary selector switch, starting off at the midnight or off position. Battery test 1.5 volts. DC amps from 2 milliamps to 10 amps. HFE or transistor mode. Continuity. Resistance up to 2 mega ohm. Diode mode. Finally, volts DC up to 500 volts. The top left, we have our backlight. In the middle, we have the one touch hold. And on the far right, we have our NPN PNP transistor tester. Bottom of the meter, we have our high current input on the left. In the middle, our common or ground. Finally, on the right, our voltage resistance and milliamp. The meter is on. As you can see, uh, not a bad looking display, actually. Um, how does it, in terms of readability, well, you know what? Not too shabby. It seems to be holding its own no matter what angle you're looking at. So viewing angle wise, it seems to be pretty good. That does have a backlight as well. Let's enable that. And oh yeah, nice and bright. A little bit of bleeding on the far right. But, uh, you know, for a cheapo, at least it has a backlight. And wow, there you go. So it does not last very long. Does it about 10 seconds or so. Hey, let's try it. Two for the price of one, right? I'm just curious if that backlight is going to go out just as fast on the second meter. Probably is. And yeah, look at that. Fading to black. In unison. Now that rotary selector switch, you know what? It's not bad. It does have a pretty good uh, range select. Kind of hits that range with authority. Um, but at the same time, a little on the mushy side. So eh, I get about a 6 out of 10. As you can see, in terms of a third-party lab certification, yeah, it just has that notorious CE label. What does CE stand for? Well, Chinese export or um, completely erroneous. I don't know. Doesn't mean much, though. Test lead is in there really well. Uh, no shake and bake going on. That is definitely snug. So, uh, well, that's good to see. Speaking of test leads, um, they're pretty tiny, pretty tiny. Plastic, hard plastic. Um, is there a rating on here at all? Oh, 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 I see something. Cat 3, 1,000 volts. Whoa! Uh, I don't think so. I wouldn't try it anyway. But uh, for basic lab electronics, uh, it should be fine. Does it pass the pull test? Oh, it passes the pull test. Whew. By the way, we should be looking at 5.00 volts. And, wow, look at that unison. Not in this case. The Anning DM830L and its twin brother are coming up with different outputs 4.94 and 4.9798 so oh that's too bad calibration wise a little bit of a uh, discrepancy hmm okay dc showdown here we go we have two ending dma 30 l's gonna strut their stuff wait wait what hang on excuse me oh really oh okay well i hear all you Folks out there, well, not all of you, but some of you incessantly say, well, Darren, why didn't you put it up against an expensive multimeter? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? Fine. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, okay, listen, I, I thought of everything today, 
and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Put it up against a $300 Sanwa PC700. So let's get all the boys in on the fun. There we go. You can see that looking good. Sitting right now, 4.28 volts. Look at that, Mr. Sanwa, 4.25 volts. By the way, this is one super duper accurate multimeter. Um, on the left, 14.12 and 14.21 so definitely uh, a little bit of a difference here compared to the expensive brother all right all right here we go up up and away i said up 18.8 19.10 and we have 19.07 for the sandwa 18.87 and 18.99 wow geez that's a quite a discrepancy now on those two annings look at that more than 10 counts off. Hmm. Okay, up, up, and away. Go up to 20.29 volts. And we are over range, of course, on these guys. So I gotta flip it up a notch because they are not auto ranging. And 20.23 for the Sanwa. Coming up as 20.28 on the Kaiweets. And look at that 20.0, 20.0. Why, what do you know? They agree on something. And 20.23 for the sanwa wow that is quite a uh, quite a ways out isn't that man oh man all right up and away I'm gonna go now to 30 you know let's just max it out 31.38 volts 31.0 31.1 and finally 31.33 for the sanwa wow so very interesting uh no doubt in this case uh, these endings are actually highly inaccurate no, not very uh, not very good showing um way out definitely not within spec either hmm too bad thought i'd bring in a third party and look at that once again uh definitely more in line with the sanwa 31.36 for mr fluke so yeah innings uh not looking so good Okay, sitting at 1.12 amps right now in high current mode. Coming up as 1.23 on the A30L. Here we go, higher and higher. 2.54 amps coming up as 2.8. Whoa. 5.3, 5.4, 3 amps. Oh my gosh, coming up at 6.2. And let's just max that sucker out. 10.29 amps. And look at that, it's showing us as 12. 12.1 amps. Wow, look at this now in high current amps. 10.29 coming up as 14 amps on the DMA30L. Insane. That is just crazy. Oh, and it is climbing. Whoa, insane. So, wow, I gotta say, whoa, not a good sign. Uh, there is the power supply kicking in. And am I smelling smoke? Is that smoke I'm smelling? Whoa. Oh, it's pretty hot, pretty hot. Okay, we're gonna bring it down let's bring down that high current and yeah wow sitting now at 4.5 amps and it's coming up at six on the 830 and i'm gonna bring it right back down now right down 220 amps i'm sorry 220 milliamps and okay so ho ho insane i gotta say this is probably the worst performance i've seen in the cheapo realm in terms of uh just dc accuracy and uh, dc current whoa insane all right so something very interesting but nonetheless uh kind of good to know is that for regular diode testing uh, you've got to have it on continuity so forget about what you see here on the dial this diode mode is actually uh nothing it doesn't put out any voltage it's null void uh your output is here on continuity so let's try our diode in, con in the continuity mode weird meter starting off with our basic standard diode and there's the forward voltage drop all right leds are next start off with the green led and oh it is lit and barely and we do have a forward voltage drop as well over to the yellow yes with that forward voltage drop over to the red and we have illumination and the blue yes but no forward voltage drop and already so five for five in terms of illumination and three to five in terms of giving us that forward voltage drop oh not bad better than i was expecting just wish they'd really put the diode icon over there yeah output voltage in diode mode is a balmy three volts and just to show you what i'm saying switch it over to diode mode and you can see look at that yeah 
next to nothing. So, <sighs> cheap stock probes, ready for continuity. Here we go, three, two, one. Wow. It is ultra slow, latched, and pretty loud, but slow as molasses. Let's try the Pro Masters. Seventy three DBA maximum output volume in continuity. Alrighty, so we're in resistance now. And now the range is pathetically low. Two meg ohm is the max. Uh, yeah, we can't do anything better than that. Over limit. Um, in terms of ranging, it seems to be okay. Uh, let's try 700k, 500k, 300k, 200, 100. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's better than some we've seen on the cheapo round, but uh, yeah, that low range just really, really doesn't make it that useful. And we're coming up as around 99.1.2 ohm for this lab resistor. I rated at 100 ohms. Eh. I already haven't done it in a while, but it's high voltage time because if there ever was a multimeter I wanted to blow up, this would be it. Okay, sitting at, let's put it to 500 volts and let's see if it can uh, meet its rating at least. Three, two, one, put the safety goggles on. And we are there, 550 volts. And yeah, okay, well, interesting. Going to go up now to 1,000 volts. Already 1,000 volts. Three, two, one. And there we are, 1,085 volts. Come on, baby. No snap, crackle, pop. Wow, I am surprised. Okay, let it settle. Try it one more time. 1,000 volts. And yeah, well, it does seem to be taking it. Surprising as ever. I definitely, though, would not recommend putting this meter on a thousand volts. Eh. By the way, just a standard crazy crappy touch hold. Really nothing going on there. So, uh, well, you know what? Let's take this puppy apart and see what's on the inside. Something I do like is that easy access to the battery compartment. Just pull down on the clip and there you are. One nine volt battery is what is powering this uh, interesting multimeter. And now you don't have a whole lot of uh, room to play here and it's a little... Yeah, let's just call it really cheap in terms of the overall fit and finish, but uh, definitely easy access. All right, let's take a look at the inside. And yeah, no uh, shielding. Well, hey, no surprise in this cheap old arena. Yeah, not, not not expecting much in this case. Let's take a look at the meter itself. I think not much going on, is there? Um, we have the split input jacks, and you know what? All things considered. Yeah, I know they're cheap and cheesy, but uh, at least they used a decent amount of so uh, globs of s solder. So, uh, you know, I've definitely seen worse in this respect. So, uh, okay, they're okay. Uh, moving up the line, look at that. We don't have a current shunt per se. We have one of those current shunt resistors right over there. Ugh. That might be part of the problem as to why we're getting such horrible um, performance in the high current mode. So, eh. no PTCs, no mobs, really nothing going on here. Also here at the top, you can see we have a uh, trim pot and I'm not sure if that's for the voltage or the resistance, but uh, you can do a little bit of manageability with this meter, uh, if you so dare. Our main IC over here is cobbed. There's the speaker and uh, yeah, not much else going on. Now here, as you can see, these are the uh, couple of wires that feed that backlight for the LCD. Now this one just popped off when I uh, moved the chassis over. Uh, it's an easy fix with the solder, but once again, oh, I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> Let's take a look on the other side. We're just gonna pop it over and there you go. So not much else going on. There's our tracks, no grease whatsoever. There's the zebra strip and there are the uh, track pads. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Six of them. Uh -huh. And do we have balls? Does this meter have balls? No, it doesn't. It just takes the resistance from these plastic clips and that's how it moves. So uh, it does not come with a, a ball or a spring. Yeah. Well, gonna put it all back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. 
If you look hard enough, you can see we actually have a protective cover on that lens display. Uh, a little piece of plastic going on on both of them, but uh, it doesn't really seem to be affecting anything. And uh, honestly, I'm not going to bother removing it at this point. So, eh. Well, they say misery loves company. That's probably why I have two. Oh, I'm telling you, these are some miserable multimeters. Ugh. The really sad part is this is the type of multimeter that gives cheapo multimeters a bad name. They're cheap, but they're also really cheesy. I mean, they suck. They're absolutely useless. Hey, if you're looking for a good cheap 830 clone, I think does so much better. I don't even know why they bothered with this. I mean, look at this, right? We have the H01. We have the good old DTA38C. We have the other Anning 8206 and that other little fun tiny one here in the end. I mean, these are all so much better meters than this thing. So why bother? Don't even get me started on that dismal DC accuracy Ugh. and that DC current, you know, just darn right dangerous. I hate it. I hated it. No capacitance either on this little meter. And you know what? That's not the end of the world per se, but I mean, it's just one more thing and a whole line of bad things with this meter. Scary thing is I have to think long and hard. Is there actually anything good about this meter? Honest to God, I can't think of anything. Well, it looks like a multimeter, so that's probably a good thing. Oh. DM830L gets a really pathetic one out of five stars. And that's only a star because it looks like a multimeter. <sighs> hey, thanks for watching this review. Everybody, stay safe. I know it's crazy times we're in right now. Hey, we're all going to get through it. Wear that mask, keep your distance, and you know what? Just do the smart thing. Thanks for watching. Till the next one, keep on testing.